So as far as your story is concern, concerned, the written part of it, you could do it like a book, you know, with words and all that good stuff in there. Um, and then what I want to see is if you write it out and really a page is probably, is probably too much. Uh, I would go for a little more than half a page if you're going to hand write it. Um, then again, it could also be, you know, a couple paragraphs and you stretch it out. But like in my book, it says in the last day of class, he sat there daydreaming at his desk. I'd probably put a one next to that line just to show me I wanted to draw a picture of him daydreaming at his desk. All right. Uh, announcements were passed out by an annoyed student that the teacher had made volunteer as the papers hit his desk with forceful shove. He glanced at them long enough to get the ideas of the information and then turn them over and use them for sketch paper. That could be one picture. That could be two pictures. It could be three pictures. That's up to you how you pace your story. So, you know, uh, announcements were passed out by an annoyed student the teacher had made volunteer. That could be one frame. As the papers hit his desk with a forceful shove, that could be a second frame. Or maybe you combine them and you show the kid passing out papers and it hitting his desk. All right. It's up to you how you decide to take your written word and turn it into images. All right. Your other option is you could write it like a script. You know, Bob. Put the name Bob, then write. Well, actually, you know what? Let me see if I can do this in real time. How fun would that be? I don't really know if that'd be fun. That might be horrible. We'll find out though. It's a theory I'm now developing as we speak. All right, so your other option, oh, this will be great. Bob. Whoops, my bad. Hey, Steve, comma, why do you have an X in your head, question mark? Steve. <laughs> what are you saying? Oop, I lost the Y. Bob again. Dude. All right, so now I get a command here. Steve reaches up, feels the X. Oh, back to Steve. Dude, X in my head. Adjusted. Hold on. I dropped my. Uh, I dropped my quotes. I just. All right. So, Steve Bob says, "Hey, Steve, why do you have an X in your head?" So I'm assuming the first panel is Steve and Bob, all right? Panel one, Steve, probably a close-up, panel two. What are you saying? Back to Bob, Bob reiterates. Steve, all right, dude, there's an ax in your head, all right? Steve reaches up, feels the ax. Surprised. All right. So 
he could feel the ax. That could be panel four. Surprise could be panel five. Oh, not V5, five. He says to Bob, Steve does, six. Dude, there's an ax in my head. Bob says, just told you that, what happened? Steve thinks, panel eight. Steve thinks harder. Panel nine. Steve looks surprised. <laughs> Panel 10. Steve, I remember I went to the kitchen to ask my mother a question. Oh, possibly the worst joke spread out between two comic pages I've ever written. All right. By doing it like a script like this, you can actually count out your panels. So if you don't want to long-term it and be like, as he sat sitting in the desk, he thought to himself, my, this desk is hard and slightly smelly. There was a piece of bubble gum under the table, which he had put there the week before, and he wondered if it was still valid. You don't have to do that. You could write it like this. Break down your panels and you would be good to go. All right. So I'm going to stop that share there. Your other option would be do it with stick figures, word bubbles, and make it an even sloppier, sloppy copy than the one I'm going to have you guys turn in. All right. So you could do it in comic form to start with. Just I need the story more than I need anything else in that. The sloppy copy is to figure out your composition, how it's going to sit there and look good. Um, if you're going to do it in comic story form, it can be relatively bigger and smaller stick figures and in, broken into panels because still even that breaking into the panels tells me a little bit how you're going to pace your story all right now before we get started on this uh okay boom i am going to show you a couple of tips about laying out your panels Feel free to ask questions as you go. All right. Um, what you see in the screen in front of you are two panels, one done well, one that's going to be horribly confusing. So the one on the right flows like we read a book, right? Because here in America and parts of the Western culture, which would be a great idea if we got some, um, we read left to right. So we would go to this panel, to this panel, this panel, this panel, this panel, this panel, all the way down. Here, this is a mishmash. We don't know where our eyes are supposed to go next. Do we follow this down and then go back up? Is this going to be the story of one person here and the story of another person here until they meet on the road? It's just too confusing. When you have to draw uh, arrows, you're defeating your flow. And right now I'm reading a comic book where they just defeated their flow on purpose and it's really annoying. I have to read a page, set it down, do something else, come back and then read a page because I just don't want to go to the next page after I read the really confusing page. All right. This sloppy copy or pre-sketch layout, this is a very advanced layout, um, basically shows you how it flows. You know, Nathan, Nathan, I know what you're going to say, but somebody points a sword at his face. He gets surprised. Then he gets angry. Then he recognizes the voice and he turns and he's happy. Ha, ha, ha. You put a sword in my face. You are my friend. You need better friends, dude. Don't put a sword in anybody's face unless, well, you know. Okay, uh, we see a sloppy copy here, Spider-Man, and we see the finished page. So you see how they laid it out here? This is really a little advanced for a sloppy copy, but it makes sense. You know exactly that Spider-Man. You see he's going to kick somebody into a web. Over here, we see all the details. So it's not the angel he's kicking into the web. It's the griffin. Um, you get all the details on his outfit. You get the uh, debris in the middle of the uh, the street. 
everything that makes that comic page look neat. Now, in laying out your pages, this is absolutely horribly overkill. Don't do this. I wouldn't do it. Um, this guy decides to do all of his stuff geometrically. Uh, probably found the golden ratio to some extent here. And uh, while it makes a really nice page, I'm pretty sure he could have made that up without doing all the geometry. The only math that I need you to do is have straight lines and spaces like here in between panels. Your panel should never be just a single line. It should be two. All right, another layout sloppy copy and the finish work. Uh, here I just see, whoops. I just see the composition of the panels, how they're gonna lay out. Here I see what's going on. Somebody's in a wasteland, subtractive of eyes, grabbing at the throat, throwing of a spike and the vampire dies. Here's how a story can unfold one or two seconds of time into 16 panels. Uh, this is from The Dark Knight Returns. This is how Batman's parents got killed. And there's actually more panels than this, but these were the ones I could find online. And I've got a super nice copy of this, so I didn't want to bend it back to put it in the scanner because I think I paid 80 bucks for it. It wasn't cheap. It's hardbound. It's got a bunch of the Frank Miller... Uh, Art, uh, stories in there but they've been accosted by a uh, thief first Bruce little Bruce Wayne surprised his dad makes a fist getting angry this guy says give me the money his fist comes up at the same time the gun does we see a subtractive of the finger we see the finger tighten and the next one so there's like a millisecond between those two we see a bullet get shot, expel a cartridge. The hand goes slack at first. Then it grabs for Bruce. Then it lets go because it can't hold anymore. As he falls, Bruce Wayne's mommy tries to grab the gun. The guy goes and smacks her, but his hand gets between her and her pearls. If you were to see the last panel, the pearls snap and they're all over the ground and bounce. Uh, that has been the version that had been in the movies for the past 20 years. So Frank Miller really created that pacing and really put the detail into that scene because in the 1939 Batman, it was all flashback and I think it was told in one panel. So you can decide how much panel you want. All right. Uh, I'm going to skip that one. All right. This is a splash page. So also in the Dark Knight Returns, there's all these street gangs. When Batman defeats the leader of the street gang, half the street gang decide they want to follow Batman, even though he didn't ask them to. Uh, the city's in a blackout or riots occurring. Uh, the police are overwhelmed. He's going to call on these thugs to help out because they say they're following him it's a really really good book uh, and you get this beautiful set of panels here batman grabs a gun out of one of their hands and says this is the weapon of the enemy we do not need it we will not use it snaps it in two our weapons are quiet precise in time i will teach them to you tonight you will rely on your fists and your brains tonight we are the law Tonight, I am the law. Let's ride. Ooh, I get chills. Uh, and then the last one from that Dark Knight series I want to show you, um, just because it's laid out so well. These two punks that decide not to follow Batman went and kidnapped a kid, um, thinking that her, the kid's parents had money. Who was the wrong kid. Her parents had no money, but they don't believe it. Batman goes to get the kid. He's thrown a bat, an actual bat, into the room. One of the punks was standing in the window when it happened. His buddy just shot him, trying to shoot the bat. So you got bye, 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 bye. Should have gotten out of the way, Spot. That was his friend. He goes, what, what? The wall? Crack. 
Batman breaks through the drywall, grabs the guy. The other guy who still has a kid says, back off, man. I'll kill the kid. Believe me, man, I will. Then you see Batman's eye gets smaller because he's assessing if he thinks this guy will do it. He goes, believe me. And then Batman has a gun in his hand and you see one bullet fly and you see the punk drop. And he goes and he grabs the child and says, I believe you. So the first time since 1939, Batman shot somebody in this book. It's the only time he does it in the book. It's the only time he felt it was necessary in the book. Um, this is just a great book. Read this book. All right, I'm going to stop this. Um, all right, so I'm going to give you guys the rest of the class period to work on this. I might show you a couple other page examples in a little while, but I want you to have some time to get something done. So get busy, and I will take attendance because the last couple of people I let in were let in while I was talking. Okay, so I'm going to recap some of the stuff that I showed you guys uh, before, just so for people who are having a hard time, um, hard time with their stories. Um, your story might be even just introducing somebody. Maybe they're going to have a monologue where they're talking about their thoughts or their ideas or who they are. You know, maybe you're like, uh, my name is uh, Shelly and here's my house. I live in this place with my three brothers. They're all younger. I have to babysit. Some days I hate my brothers. And you could show your brothers doing horrible things. This is my dog. Him I like, but my dad doesn't like the dog because the dog goes in the house. All right. I mean, you could do it two pages of that, like just an intro, or you could address it the way it was in Spider-Man, the ultimate Spider-Man, when they introduced Gwen Stacy, who's was a much different Gwen Stacy than back in the early 60s. So Kong, the guy, bald guy, and Peter Parker are having this argument about mutants because Kong is like, they're all coming after us, man. We got to do something to get rid of mutants. And Peter's like, you're sounding like a racist. All of a sudden, Gwen Stacy pops in. She goes, how do you think the dinosaurs felt that moment right before the meteor hit? I mean, they were just like standing around. All of a sudden, it's like, oh, blank, we're extinct. I mean, that's what's going on, right? That's what you're worried about. We're extinct. And all of a sudden, if you don't fly, you don't survive. I mean, there's a guy now who can walk on walls. What's that about? And now you have to think about that fact every day of your life, the fact that you can't. Then I think about it, maybe it's like this. Maybe the difference between us and the dinosaurs is we know. They didn't know. They didn't have a chance. But we know. There are things more powerful in the world more powerful than us. The real question is, what are us normal people? What are we going to do without powers? But see, what is like powers anyhow? This dude right here is stronger than me. Does that make him super powered? See? Because I have a theory that like whatever you do is your superpower. You play guitar, football, math. Whatever you do makes you you. That's your power. And I think, I think in this new world, we're just going to be forced to do what it is you can do the best you can, or you ain't going to make it. So maybe you won't ever have like super mutant powers. All that means is no more sitting on your fat butt watching cartoons. It's going to be about what you can do that another can't. Gwen Stacy. It's my first day here. So she basically goes through that speech, knocks them over with these thoughts, and then walks away, making her far cooler than the whiny I got thrown off the bridge Gwen Stacy from back in the 60s. She could have pepper sprayed the goblin. Uh, not even. Uh, so... You could do an introduction like that. Doesn't have to be as wordy. Doesn't have to be as deep. Like I said, it could be about your family, your dogs. All right. Here's another one that we talked about back in the day. And uh, this is interesting because there's very little going on here. There's a lot of back and forth. 
it's mostly close-ups. So Peter's about to tell MJ that he's Spider-Man. Uh, this is really one of my favorite comics in the history of comic books because it's an entire issue of him trying to tell her he's Spider-Man and then her not believing him. Uh, so he starts off with, and, and you, you, you can't tell anyone. I mean, anyone. Okay. Ever. Ever. Okay. You got to promise me. I promise. I mean it. You've got to promise me. Peter. Okay. Then there's this long pause and you can feel the pause. Like, you know, he wants to say it, but he can't get it out. And she's like, Peter or Peter, I'm Spider-Man. First, there's shock on her face. The next panel is her falling off the bed laughing. So it's just this beautiful scene where she's not going to believe him until he sticks on to the ceiling. Uh, so you could write a scene like that. I would like to see bird's eye, worm's eye. I see a bird's eye here. We're looking down on the bed. Um, I'm a little more concerned about how you break up your spaces. So it's not going to just be back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, but yeah, you could totally do that. Um, cause next week I want the sloppy copies and then, um, we need to start drawing them. If you're in school, you can ink them and then color them. Cause we got majorly awesome coloring options in school. Uh, yeah. All right, guys, you got to clean up. Have a good day. Stay out of trouble. For my people at home, I'll let you go early. Stay out of trouble. Have a good weekend. Bye.